America until she laid at his feet. Now I ask you good people, is the place of an American at an Englishman's feet? No. no, I should say it is not. Not at his feet, sir, but at his side, as loyal subjects to our king. We only have a reason to be sure, but the answer cannot be flying in the face of royal authority. What will the governor do? Surely he will not remove our government. Close our court? It is unthinkable. No, it is not unthinkable. These intolerable acts have been placed upon Boston or Massachusetts could come to any of his colonies. This, this, my friends, is what happens when you have no voice in government. And this is why we must stand together and declare, like those sons of liberty, no. that we will not allow the governor to tread upon our rights. Right. People of Williamsburg, <laughs> loyal subjects of his most gracious majesty, King George III. God save the king. God save the king. Long may he live. You see, I stand before you today, good people, a vexed and troubled man. Yes, I stand before you betrayed. Betrayed as you have all been betrayed. That is right, good people. You have all been betrayed by the very men that you yourselves elected to be your voice in government. You see, on the 16th night of December last, 17 and 73, in the port of Boston, traitorous miscreants dressing themselves up as wild Indians. <laughs> well, they did in the dead of night board three ships of the East India Company, and once there, they did cast overboard some 300 and 42 chests of tea. Shameful. Some 10,000 pounds sterling worth casted right into the sea. Well now, to prevent further such offensive acts against private property, Parliament will, with His Majesty's blessing of necessity, close the port of Boston until the said tea is paid for. And that is to be effected the first day of June. Let's put six days hence. However, the crimes of these ill-named sons of liberty are of no bother to us here in Virginia. They're not, sir, they're not. You see, punishment for those crimes has been attended. The king's justice has been served. God save the king. And yet your, and yet your elected men seem to disagree. In fact, your Burgess men have called for the day of fasting, humiliation, and prayer, an expression of sympathy for these destroyers of property and wanton lawbreakers in Boston. Now, some of you may ask, ask him if you like, some of you may ask what harm can be known by a call for prayer? What possible affront can be taken by a recommendation for the day of fasting? Well, I declare to you here this day that such a call is not benign. It is a clear expression of sympathy for fools and for traitors. It is a most base and direct affront against His Majesty the King. Hear, hear. Your Burgess men can read and write. They know blasted well that days of fasting and prayer may only be decreed by His Majesty the King. Or here in His Majesty's province of Virginia, this province of Virginia, it can be decreed by myself, his appointed executive, yet by some authority which I am simply try as I might. I am simply unable to discover. And in some very dangerous states of delusion, they have ordained themselves proclaimers. Now I hold in my hand, hush up, I hold in my hand a paper published by one of your House of Burgesses, conceived in such ill terms as reflects highly upon His Majesty the King and the Parliament of Great Britain, which of course makes it necessary for me to dissolve them. And I therefore dissolve your House of Burgesses accordingly. God save the King. God save the King. Well, Mr. Jefferson, what shall I have us all do now, sir? I well, what should we do now, sir? Gentlemen and ladies, we have been dissolved and we will remove ourselves from this place accordingly. Friends, we serve at the pleasure of the king, and the governor is the king's voice here in Virginia. So surely we won't take this line down. We can. Nay, I do not intend to take it lying down, nor should you, sir. Friends, we may have been dissolved of our ability to, to sit in that house as your rightful elected representatives and pass legislation for the benefit of all. But friends, I say that we have a higher calling, that we have a higher purpose, and that is to you. You people who elected us to be your representatives in government. That is a right which flows through the blood of every freeborn Briton. That is a right which is guaranteed to us by our 
British Constitution. That is a right which is guaranteed to us by our Magna Carta, and that right cannot be washed away by the actions of one man. And so I say, let us meet. Let us meet two days hence at the Raleigh Tavern, friends, and our first order of business shall be to sign a non-importation agreement. We shall not purchase British goods until we are recognized as full British subjects. And secondly, friends, on the 1st of June next, when our brothers in Boston see their, their civil liberties stripped away because of the actions of a few, well, we Virginians will stand up shoulder to shoulder with them. We will call for this day of fasting, of humiliation, and yes, of prayer. This is not a proclamation as our governor has suggested. This is a recommendation. We are simply saying that we, your Burgess men, will be praying. Should you choose to join us, that is your choice. But we will be praying. We'll be praying to our, our king who sits on a throne uh, across that great body of water and our king who sits on a throne in heaven to place a softening in the hearts of parliament, to place reason in the minds of parliament that we may divert ourselves from this current calamity, divert ourselves, friends, from this current path towards civil war. God save us all. And God save Virginia. God save Virginia. God save Virginia. God save Virginia. God save Virginia.